Hello friends, today we are going to discuss observer pattern. This comes under behavioral design pattern. We will understand this by working on this real time use case. The use case goes something like this. We have this internal website of our company tech solution. At present it has two departments, IT and finance. Right now they are in the process of automating employee separation workflow. It means they need a system where once any employee resigns, then this system should notify all the existing departments. And yes, very importantly, we have an additional very important non-functional requirement as well. The employee separation system should be loosely coupled so that in future, if any new departments are introduced, then we should be able to easily plug in this notification mechanism without making changes in our existing code. We will see how efficiently and beautifully observer pattern can fix this problem. I will be using ASP.NET Core MVC application for this. But if you are not aware of web application development, do not worry. I will write just few lines of code to achieve this and I will ensure that you are able to follow along with me. By end of this video, you will be completely comfortable in implementing this in your real-time projects. So let's get started. So I am in my Visual Studio. Let me create an ASP.NET Core web application. Let's name it as Observer. So Scuff Folding has given me this default website code. In this default code base, I will just add few HTML in index view and few C -sharp code in controller. But before that, as our use case contains departments, let me create a folder called departments and add two classes IT and finance as the existing department. Let me create that and come back. So I have created the two departments, finance just has an interface iFinance and a blank implementation of calculate salary. Similarly, for IT, an interface iAsset and its implementation. Now let me go ahead and update our UI. Let me write few CSS and HTML and come back. So I have these few CSS here. If you are following it along with me, then you can pause the video and type it quickly. Do let me know in comments if you want this entire source code. I will upload it in GitHub and provide the link. So down here I have the body section, header text as departments, two post buttons for two departments, IT and finance, displaying a text to notify which button has been clicked. That's it for view. Hope you found these HTMLs to be pretty simple. Now let's go ahead and write two action methods for these buttons in controller. So I got these two action methods. Let me inject the instances of my departments through the constructor. Let me call the respective department methods from the action it.allocateAssets short message for the view. Let me just do the same thing for finance. Now let's register our dependencies to the ASP.NET Core dependency container. Let's go to our startup class. Let's go to configure services method. Services dot add singleton. When I ask for iAsset, give me IT instance. And similarly, when I ask for iFinance, give me finance instance. With this, I am done with my existing implementations. Let me run this and see. Let me quickly change this name to text solution. Let me go to layout view. Let me change the font family and text color. With this, Let's run it again. Looks good. Let me click IT. So we get this message. 
allocated assets. Let me click finance. We get the message calculated salary. Perfect. It means our functionality is working fine. Now, do you remember what is pending? Yes, we have to implement our new requirement of automating employee separation process. And I hope you remember that we have a non-functional requirement attached to it. That is, the system should be loosely coupled. And we are going to implement this using our best suited observer pattern. Now, how does observer pattern works? To understand observer pattern, First, you need to understand the subject and the observer object. Let's see this. So there is something called subject that implements an interface I subject. This is the class that contains or is associated with the class that has the event or state change that others are interested in. It means it must have a code that is responsible for notifying all other classes those are interested in the state change of this object. If we correlate subject with our code implementation, then it would be controller or it would be a class that the controller will use to notify. In our case, controller class will receive the first communication related to employee's resignation and this is the class responsible for notifying all other classes interested in employee's resignation. Now, what are those classes known as who are interested in this state change? They are called observers. These are the classes interested in the state change of our subject. Again, if we correlate this with our implementation, then these are the departments. Remember, IT and finance departments who are interested in employee's resignation. Now, since subject has to notify observers, the subject must contain the local collection of all its observers, right? But there may be hundreds of observers. How can subject maintain this list? Yes, for that we create an abstract observer as a contract in the form of an interface. And because interface is a contract, the subject can now safely rely on any class that implements the observer interface with a method notify and can use this method to notify all its observer. Subject also contains a subscription mechanism that allows adding and removing of the observers. These two methods are the part of iSubject interface as these methods will be accessed by the observers to add themselves to the observer list maintained by the subject. Now, with this class structure, when the event actually occurs, the subject can notify each of the observer in the collection by calling one of their methods. In our case, that's notify. I hope you got some idea how it works. If not, don't worry. The code example will make everything clear. Let's implement this notification mechanism in our code. Let's add few HTML for this view and an action method in our controller. Again, just couple of lines of HTML. Header text, employee separation, a text box for employee ID, and a submit button. Let's go ahead and add our action method in controller. So this is our action method employee separate which receives an employee ID. Let me just quickly debug and see if this action method is getting fired from UI. UI looks to be okay. Let me give some employee ID and click employee separate button. So it hits our action method with the appropriate employee ID. So till now we are doing okay. Now let me create our subject and observer interface. Let's create a folder called subject. Let's create our subject interface. Let's name it as I resignation. Now let's create our observer interface. Let's name it as I resignation observer. Now let's go ahead and add our subject interface methods. Remember, it should have a method to add and remove observer. Add observer. What it will add? It will add our observer, right? And that's of type I resignation observer. Let's add a method to remove observer as well. And a method to notify observer with an employee ID. So we are done with our subject interface. Let's go ahead and add a method to our observer interface void notify 
and parameter as employee ID. Now let's add our concrete subject. Implement I resignation. So we have a list of type I resignation observer to hold all our observers. We instantiated the list in the constructor. Let's add the observer to the observer list. Let's remove it as well. Now let's implement our notify observer. So we have to look through our list and notify each observer, right? So let's write a for each loop for each item in our observer list item dot notify and our employee ID. So what we have done here, we have an observer list adding incoming observer instance to the list looping through each observer and notifying the observer class by calling a method in it. Let's rename item to observer. That makes more sense. Now let's go to our observer class and implement our observer interface. So I resignation observer. We got this method. Let me put some text for now. Whenever employee resigns, the notification will come here and accordingly finance department is supposed to take necessary action. IT is also interested in employee SAP protection. So let's go ahead and implement our observer interface to it as well. So we are done with our observer class implementation. Now let's inject our subject interface to controller. Let's call our notify observer method. Okay, let's do a short recap of what we have done till now. So we have created our subject interface I resignation with following methods. Then implemented the interface in our concrete subject resignation and then we have our observer interface with the method notify and then injected I resignation in controller and calling our method notify observer. Now we have to register our new types to dependency container for appropriate instantiation. Let's do that. So we are done with our initial implementation. Let's see the flow once. User will click this submit button. Control goes to this action method and will call our notify observer. And in that, it loops through all the observers and notifies. Hey, yes, a very important step we are forgetting here. That's to add our observer to the observer list maintained by our subject. Let's do that. Inject our subject interface here. And add this instance to our observer collection list. Let's do the same for IT as well. Now we are done. Basically, whenever this class will get instantiated, the instance will get added to this list. Now just for demonstration purpose, let's create an XML file and add the department and employee ID to it whenever the observer gets notification. So I have added this XML file with a root node department. Let me create a helper class and add some code to update this XML. So this code will just add the department and employee ID to our XML. Let me change this hard coded value to incoming department. Okay. Now let's go ahead and call this from our observer classes. department name and employee ID. Let's do the same for the other observer. So now let's debug our application. Let's give some employee ID EP234. So it comes to our action method. 
see we have two observer list IT and finance so the first observer is IT notification goes to IT and IT writes the department and employee ID to our XML and then the second observer is finance it goes to notify and again the details are written to our XML let's check our XML so the employee ID is properly written under the departments let's give another employee ID see that is also written it means our notification mechanism is working fine now as we discussed the application should be loosely coupled so that addition of new departments should be easily pluggable without making changes to the existing code let's see if our application is loosely coupled let's go ahead and create another department library since the class is also interested in the state change that is employee separation let's implement observer interface i resignation observer let's write to our xml whenever it gets a notification with a department id as library let's add this instance to our observer collection of our subject let's introduce an interface just to be in sync with our other observer that's it now only instantiation of our library class is pending rest this class is all good to get the notification of employee separation let's go ahead and instantiate it via our dependency injection container let's inject the library interface to our controller and add new type to our container we are all done let's run it and see if our new department library also gets a notification let's give the employee id as ep0002 see now our new department library also gets the notification have you realized how extensible the code is we can plug in new departments without touching the existing code so the main benefit that we get from this pattern is it supports the principle of loose coupling between objects that interact with each other and also observers can be easily added and removed at any point in time though one prominent disadvantage i see with this pattern that we should take extra care for memory leaks as it might happen because of explicit register and unregistering of observers especially when this pattern is implemented using events so that's all for today i hope i was able to make you understand the observer pattern if you like the video then consider subscribing the channel for all my upcoming videos on c sharp and other technologies thanks